I'm anointed by God to teach the word. I'm his child. I'm called by God. And God's anointing gives me the authority that I need to do what I'm doing. You a lie. You a lie. God ain't never told a woman to do something that contradict that Bible. That's right. Never. Don't get on social media and say something bad about somebody else. You don't even need to give your opinion about somebody else on social media. When a woman says she's a preacher, you a liar. It's a lie. Every woman that says God called and sent her to preach the gospel, Joyce Myers, that oh, Joyce you. Myers. There's something wrong, deeply wrong, inside somebody when they have to say something like that, especially with that kind of a tone. And when you start hearing that kind of stuff from Christians, that's a good indication from somebody that you don't want to spend a lot of time with and you need to get away from. Joyce Mayer firmly defended her belief that she was called by God to preach the gospel, despite Geno Jennings' repeated claims that women are not divinely appointed to such roles. In a passionate response, Mayer asserted her unwavering commitment to her calling, undeterred by criticism. She explained that her mission is not based on human judgment, but on a profound personal encounter where she felt God speak directly to her heart, affirming her purpose to share his word. Mayer stands resolute, convinced that her path is guided by divine intent rather than societal expectation. You know, people ask all the time, how do you know when God is calling you to do something? And it may sound like a, a lame answer, but you just know. I mean, you know, it's like God puts such a strong desire in your heart. Joyce Mayer affirmed her commitment to preach the gospel with passion, regardless of any criticism she faced. Gino Jennings has been vocal in his opposition to women in ministry, often preaching that, according to scripture, women are not called by God to preach. He has specifically criticized Mayer's role as a preacher, asserting that women should not hold positions of spiritual authority. In response, Mayer has expressed her disappointment with Jennings' stance, finding his interpretation of scripture not only dismissive but also hurtful, particularly as she feels deeply called by God to her ministry. She believes Jennings' teachings overlook the valuable contributions of countless women in ministry around the world, framing his position as part of a broader, outdated debate within Christianity about gender roles. For Mayer, her ministry is a testament to God's grace and a message of hope and empowerment that transcends gender. I mean, every time when God was calling me into ministry, I was rejected by family and friends at that time. And I mean, rejected like if you're going to do that then we can't have anything else to do with you wow because they really didn't feel like that a woman being in ministry was correct and and it was a group of church friends mm -hmm. which makes it even harder and it can it can confuse you too because you think well am i right am i hearing from god or am i really making a big mistake and when i started it i wasn't even cognizant of the fact that women didn't normally do that i mean i was just so caught up in what i felt like god was telling me to do and it was being successful. And, you know, I always teasing, I say, I didn't know women couldn't teach till people started telling me <laughs> that they couldn't. Right. And so in this church that we were going to, they felt like that I wasn't supposed to be teaching, that Dave should be mm -hmm. teaching. I remember going out of the church one Sunday and the pastor looking at Dave and he said, brother, you should be teaching that Bible study, not your wife. At the same time, him saying it, I'm, I, I'm thinking, uh, you know, that you know, why did God not give me the gift? Why did he give it to her? You know, and so I've got that in me a little bit. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I'm going to do it. You know, and so I, I tried and it didn't work. Just I didn't have the ability to teach. From the very beginning, she had the gift to teach. And I recognize that. Gino Jennings preaches that, according to scripture, women should not hold the role of preacher. One of the primary passages he cites is from the New Testament, specifically John 3.34. You better give me John. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 3, and begin at verse 34. At verse 34. And for he. For she. For he. She. He. H E. <laughs> what did the Holy Ghost say? For he. He. Whom God. Whom God. Hath sent. Hath sent. Speaketh the words of God. God don't send women to preach. No. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. I suffer. I suffer not a woman to teach. 
nor to usurp authority over the man. Has any women preachers here? Sit down. That's right. Well, I know what God told me. You a lie. You a lie. God ain't never told a woman to do something that contradicts that Bible. That's right. Uh -huh. never. never. That's right. The verse uses the pronoun he to describe those whom God sends to deliver his message, suggesting in Geno Jennings' interpretation that God specifically appoints men to preach. This perspective reinforces a traditional view held by some denominations where preaching and church leadership roles are reserved for men. Jennings also frequently cites 1 Timothy 2, 12, which he interprets as additional support for this belief, emphasizing that preaching roles are intended for men. According to Jennings' interpretation of scripture, verses like these suggest that women should adopt a quiet, receptive role in church, remaining under the authority of male leaders. This approach is understood to mean that women should not assume roles involving teaching or preaching from the Bible. A critical person is proud. A fault-finding person is proud. A harsh person, somebody who's just hard on people, who's legalistic and has too many rules and regulations about the way they want everything done. You know, Jennings firmly believes that God has established a specific order within the church assigning men as spiritual leaders and reserving women for supportive roles. According to Jennings, this hierarchy is divinely ordained, and he argues that allowing women to preach contradicts clear biblical teaching. Citing scriptures such as John 3:34 and 1 Timothy 2, 12, Jennings emphasizes that the role of preaching is reserved for men, and that women should serve in other capacities within the church, to uphold this traditional order. Joyce Mayer, however, believes her calling to preach is directly inspired by God, and she remains unwavering despite Jennings' criticisms. Mayer contends that Jennings' interpretation is overly rigid and neglects the broader themes of inclusion and equality found throughout Scripture. For her, God's grace and purpose are available to all, and she views her role in ministry as a testament to that. Mayer focuses on a message of hope, empowerment, and spiritual growth, one she feels transcends traditional gender roles. The debate between Jennings and Mayer reveals a deeper discussion within Christianity on scripture interpretation, gender roles, and the purpose of ministry. Jennings holds steadfastly to the belief that adherence to God's word, even when it contradicts societal norms, is essential. He sees Mayer's approach as compromising biblical integrity in favor of popularity and material gain. Mayer, on the other hand, believes her ministry aligns with God's calling for her life, offering hope and inspiration to those seeking a deeper faith. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.